are your personalities or your lives. You depict them alone and they are in some, to some reason they are perfectly alone. So one has the sentiment that they feel somehow good. Somehow. But if you if you look at my paintings, you mm -hmm. you see not only one person. Yeah, you have birds and uh, you have uh, uh, you have somebody, and you can you can see also the man. So he's in the shadow, yeah. and yeah. he is approached violently with that eye or yeah. claw yes. or whatever it is. His head. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's which is just about to be hit <laughs> maybe by it's, uh, <laughs> its last teeth. But maybe, it maybe loneliness, loneliness is uh, mostly if you can paint two persons and maybe it's uh, double loneliness. Yes, but uh, <laughs> I, have to, I have to get up now because this is uh, intriguing, this picture. I have to put away the microphone. Are your personalities or your lives, you depict them alone and they are in some, to some reason they are perfectly alone. So one has the sentiment that they feel somehow good. Somehow. But if you, if you look at my paintings, you mm -hmm. You see not only one person. Yeah, uh, you have birds and... Uh, you, have, uh, uh, you have somebody and you can, you can see also the man. But so he's in the shadow yeah. and yeah. he is approached violently with that eye or claw yes. or whatever it is. His head. Yes, his, uh, it's, it's his Which is just about to be hit <laughs> maybe by it's, uh, <laughs> <laughs> its last teeth. But maybe, maybe, maybe loneliness, loneliness is uh, mostly if you can paint two persons and maybe it's uh, double loneliness. Yes, but uh, <laughs> I, have to, I have to get up now because this is uh, intriguing, this picture. Yeah. I have to put away the microphone. Yeah. Uh, when I first saw this picture, I had a reflection, okay, it's called gravity. And uh, I, I thought about uh, a Bible being first, you know, it's the first class of, uh, of uh, the primary school that you learn that, that the, the Holy Family had to flee to Egypt. So they used the donkey and there was Joseph walking the donkey, Christ was born and he was sitting with it looking uh, it's Mary on, on the like table, Maria, and, and now we have all male appearance. Even the donkey has lost its male appearance. You know, you there is no male. <laughs> this is all <laughs> minus male. But this is but maybe this is stupid. You know. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he, lost, he lost his head and also. Third leg, a fourth leg. Oh. <laughs> oh, I saw, I saw this was a shadow. But the first layer, yeah. in this painting, I can uh, uh, say, uh, alternate. Reveal. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Disclose. <laughs> Disclose that here was the heaven and landscapes, and here was the falling and in the beginning, there was the uh, falling and burning, and and I repaint this this team on this. So I changed the rest of the burning angels. Yeah, depicted here as a no, 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 no. this shape, but this is only very special moment. You can see. I don't want to talk about my painting. Sorry, but if you are very close, you see this is not only the pink line, but this is the uh, dancers. Ballerinas. So, Dress. Uh, yeah. And the uh, shantan dancers. 
Ah, come, come. Come, come. Come, come, come. You see the uh, skirt? And, and a lot of women inside. So, um, if you spend more time in front of my paintings, you can discover more. This is the way how to. Uh, Look at my paintings because I spent with them very uh, months, maybe years when they are finished. But in fact, you paint several yeah. pictures yes, and in layers. Sometimes I made the layers. photos, and so, but I haven't them here. It's like a cartoon. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes, this is like a story. Yeah. You can you can uh, discover how I uh, because painting develop very slowly oh. and I put on on this canvas lot of stories and in the end because it's very hard to find the end of painting it's very hard because you can continue more it's very hard for yeah. you to give it away yeah, to, yeah. to decide when it's finished. So you have to buy quickly. <laughs> <laughs> but then she changed her mind. <laughs> um, I wanted to come back to your argument because uh, there is another story. It's of Sumeric tradition. Is that Lilith uh, inhabited the tree of life also as a demon. And uh, the, the queen of the sky uh, wanted to have this tree, his timber, its timber, for having a throne and a bed. And uh, so she called to Utu, uh, the, the sun god, who had an axe of bronze, to help her. And this Utu came down and uh, he made Lilith flee to the desert and he cut down the tree. So the hot principle and the soft principle maybe symbolized the hot principle with the X, and the soft principle maybe uh, Lilith. The soul of the tree. The soul of the tree. Yeah. There's also another way, of course, how to read this in a very brutally economic way, and that is that Lilith is really, I, I, would, I would propose, a, a quite a nice, descri nice description of the way the economy functions. It, it eats its own production, which is... I would, you know, of course, this, the, you will always read. We're talking about the curse. We're talking about the curse of Lilith, who needs to give birth, produce. So, because today we are very productive, but the only place that we're not productive is reproduction. We are, as civilization, we're dying now. So we are not reproductive. We are productive in the sort of the condom way. We produce very much, but we put a condom on it. I would even criticize philosophy, if I may, a little bit. Uh, that it's, it's all philosophy in a condom. We have these intellectual dances and everything, but we don't want our ideas to be actually materialized. We fear the very intimate production. And this is also how we make love. Most of the time, we only make it for pleasure with a condom on one side or the other. Um, but we don't actually want to see the product of our love making, which is also interesting that it's called love making. Uh, as if you could make love by, by making love. Yeah. But anyway, this is a different, this is a different topic. <laughs> there is a beautiful French movie called <coughs> Le Grand Boeuf. You must have seen it, all of you, I suppose, in this, in, the, in this audience, which is basically a story about a couple of people being gluttonous and eating themselves to death, which is ultimately the curse that you, that you sort of see. During the communist regime in Czech Republic and in other countries, we also had we also had crises, but the crises were of the reverse order than what we have today. We wanted cars, but there were simply not enough cars. We wanted sugar, but there were shortages of sugar. We wanted razor blades, but there were no razor blades. In other words, the demand was sound, but the supply was malfunctioning. This was a typical situation of uh, a communist, a, a plan, a centrally planned economy. Today, we have crises within capitalism, or how you want to call it, but they are exactly of reverse nature. 
we have enough cars, but nobody wants them. We have enough sugar, but we don't want it anymore. We have 10 different uh, types of razor blades, but simply we don't demand enough. In other words, the supply is functioning very well, too well perhaps, one would even say, but the demand is, less, is missing, you know, that the economy is about supply and demand. So in other words, the economy today cannot eat everything it produces. In other words, the economy is more productive than the hunger. The hunger is not enough to eat. And this is the problem of today. This is why you hear all the time from politicians, you must consume more, even though, like in the movie, you are already fed. This is your sin that you cannot eat like Lilith. You are not hungry enough. You're not devouring enough. And the irony of our age is that when we have come to the conclusion that the economy cannot eat everything it produces, the recipe is, let's produce more. This is what you hear and read in the newspapers, in the radio, and in the TV, is that our problem is that we don't consume enough. Our consumption is not strong enough to eat and employ all the, all, all the things that we give, give birth to. Of course, if you took two steps back, you would come up with a more natural recipe, and that is if you can't eat everything that we cook, well, let's cook a little bit less. Let's relax and let's do other things than making things, which is something that you hear very, very, very rarely. Now, philosophers know this, theologians know this, artists know this, but that's about it. The rest of the society, dominated by, by economists, are propagating this eternal circle of production and consumption which turns in a vicious circle which must be kept, like in the case of Lilith. It's in a way a curse. Also interpret into Lilith is that she is maybe the, the alpha and the omega of uh, capitalism in so far as freedom to her is the highest value at first she gets her freedom with the curse which means that you are within these ever faster spinning circle of production reproduction and even killing your production before you before it can flourish so she kills babies and this is uh, like we had this film, uh, The Matrix. Maybe you've seen it. Most of you would have seen it. Maybe. So this is an illusion machine that is put to the world to make believe that the world is all right and our life is all right, whereas it is in ruins. Um, they were slaves, in fact. They were slaves, in fact. They were able to move. Right. But the machine is fueled by babies because they have no fuel anymore there is uh, some scorched. no oil and they produce oil out of the most valuable life so to say they suck it off and uh, uh, this is like Lilith who is a figure of uh, a they call it succubus so somebody who sucks energy and uh, for, as a symbol, you know, it's the sperm of man that is the energy. Right. Right. <laughs> Full stop. <laughs> you can even see, you can even see the succubus uh, uh, property in the very generation that we are living right now, because uh, I would say that the growth that we have seen of GDP and, and all that, that we so much want to reproduce again over and over and over again, wasn't really ours. We sucked it like a succubus from our surroundings. When you see a wave forming, the wave forms at the expense of the surrounding levels of the water. So when you, there you have a flat surface and a, walk, and, a, and a wave forms, the surrounding level of waters uh, go down to form, to form the wave. So the wave, so to speak, sucks the energy of, of the surrounding. We have done this as a civilization exactly in economy as well. We suck the energy of the past. Fossil fuels and mineral fuels is an energy, uh, sort of a battery, 
that we have, this is only three generations that would learn how to actually use that tremendous energy. We suck the energy from the future, which is all these debts that we have borrowed from the future. We sucked from around us in terms of Okay, globalization, of course, is, is, is beneficial for the poor countries as well, but it's mainly beneficial for us. So we have created this way, like a sack of us, sucking the energy from uh, past, past, future, horizontal, the surrounding of us, producing a wave of growth on which we got addicted. And we want this to go, but there is nothing more to suck. And, uh, uh, ironically, the problem is not that there is not enough supply to suck from, but that the hunger of the vacuum cleaner is not strong enough to suck from distances that are, that are irrelevantly far. Now, if I may say one thing about this painting, it's called Gravity, and everybody knows that there is a movie also called Gravity, which, uh, if I may try to connect these two, uh, I don't know if you've seen it. It's, it's definitely a movie w worth seeing. It's basically, again, I don't know how many of you have seen it, no. the movie Gravity. Not yet. No. Not yet. It's exactly a movie about being alone. It's a movie that has, is a bundle with special effects, but you could, it, you could even have it as a theater performance. It's a beautiful dialogue of, 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 of two, three, trial of three people who basically have vertigo in all directions because you're there in space and you are fundamentally alone. And I would even put up this claim that this a normal human predicament to be alone, which is sometimes disturbed by a feeling of being close to some other person. But because God also was alone in the beginning, and if I'm reading Bible and any other literature that is of religious nature correctly, God still is alone. I'm able to actually really breach this sort of a strange thing, a plastic wall that is between any other human or object that you have. Perfect. Art to me, one last sentence, art to me sometimes also manages to portray the false illusion that you are close to an object of art, for example. So when I see art that, quote unquote, speaks to me, I feel close, for a little moment, to that piece of art. And that to me is the most beautiful thing that you can have in life, is the destruction, the disturbance of the fundamental feeling of being fundamentally alone. Thank you, I would say this was famous last words. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I already took my percentage of the speaking tonight, so I... Uh, <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs>